Oh, I killed a bro. Killed a bro. Thanks for joining me. No trouble, bro. Um, it's always nice to talk to you. I don't think we've ever, ever actually done a one-on-one -on -one, me and you. I know you talked to my bro uh, JB a couple of times, and and yeah. I think we've done a like a um, like an email interview once before a long time ago. But it's actually really cool to talk to you now, bro, face to face. Yeah, thanks for having me on, bro. It's good stuff. No worries, man. Any time. I mean, I've been like super busy with work, and I haven't done as many interviews as I'd hoped to be doing. But um, I saw your uh, 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 on uh, Instagram, your you know, a little message there about about the New Zealand media, and and historically, the New Zealand media has been quite shit, you know. But um, recently, I thought I thought Māori TV was doing quite a good job, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think yeah. They, they definitely have the best coverage of anyone in the game in the New Zealand media, man. Like Maori TV covers all combat sports. They're getting the kickboxing on there, the boxing. Like there are heaps of shows going on. They're they're doing the best by far, man. Yeah, yeah, they are. They um, you know, they hit up Kai as soon as as soon as he got back. Uh, I think they had Shane Young on there. Um, before he had his his last yep. fight, I mean they're doing really well. We got Duke. Uh, it's a free to air TV is showing the One FC now, and they started pumping that uh, when Ev was headlining. So I mean the wheels are always in motion, but I guess it's still not where we want it to be. Oh, I don't, I don't think it ever will be. You know, <laughs> I think it's just a constant process, and and the more the more we chuck it in people's faces, and the more we push it, uh, the more support we have. The better it will be because it's it's combat sports is massive in New Zealand. We have a we have a huge history and a huge talent base. I think the talent base in New Zealand is just look. I've been all over the world. You know, I've been to America training training with guys from all over the world, and I know that New Zealand has for its population a ridiculous amount. But pound for pound, man, some of the best in the world. Yeah, that's totally true. I mean, uh, we've always been up there for, especially when I got into combat sports, it was with the kickboxing, and we were we were right up there, you know, we were giving everyone help. Uh, part of the whole reason of, of me having a Facebook page is, is because I was, I was just sick of talking to people who didn't know what MMA was, you know. Or that's the whole point of my page is to try and get it out there to as many people as I can. Every time I meet someone, you know, it's the first thing off my out of my mouth is, do you watch MMA or the UFC? And as soon as yeah. someone says that, then I'm on a tangent with them, man. I, you know, I can connect. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's, there's two ways to go about the problem. I saw that, uh, you know... I saw so many fighters complaining, oh, these people don't know what they're talking about, their opinions, or who are you? But that's the thing, I've had more educated discussions with uh, purely MMA fans. You know, they're, they're, they're talking about the technique and they're breaking down the technical aspects. They're saying, oh, they're not just saying, oh, smash him, knock him out. They're saying, oh, well, he's the better grappler. He should uh, push him against the cage. And, you know, you can have some great discussions. So there's two ways to go about it. You can either sit there and bitch and and tell them they don't know what they're talking about, or you can help educate the people, and that's that's all the breakdowns do. I'm out there, I'm, I'm, it's 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 high level stuff, but I, I try to make it as easy to understand as I can, and it's as straightforward. So someone that has no MMA experience can watch the video and completely understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's also it's also high level technique, which you know I can look at I can look at. Uh, uh, one of the best fighters in the world, you know, I can say, he did this wrong. And it's it's right, you know, he circled the wrong way. Yeah. And and an average Joe can understand that. Oh, you shouldn't circle into a fighter's power hand. So it's it's just helping educate people and, and encouraging smart discussion about the sport. Yeah, well, there's a few there's a few good things about it. Um, it. It puts you out into into the spotlight, so to speak, in, in a social media aspect. You know, that's more media for people to to have to to know Dan Hangman better. Uh, you also look like you love doing it, and uh, and I want to ask by breaking down fights, by breaking them down to you know the the movements and stuff. Does that help you train, or does that help you as you know evolve your own game? Uh, like, 
definitely you can you can look at at the analysts that the UFC has working on Fox Sports, Stephen Thompson, uh, Tyrone Woodley, uh, Michael Bisping, and and Dominic Cruz. So you've got you know they weren't they weren't champions when they got selected to do that stuff. So yep. you can the evidence is there. Uh, I yeah, in, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two just fought for a title. There's there's three out of four are world title holders. So what does that tell you? They're obviously getting better by breaking down these fights and not only watching film, because I, I watch film like crazy and I always have, always watching fights, man. <laughs> like people think, what's, it, what's your hobby? Oh, well, like I train and then I come home and I watch fights. Yeah. You know, I love this game. So it's watching the fights and then it, analyzing it and trying to explain it to someone in a basic, uh, in the most basic way possible that's the that's the difficult part. That's that's the challenging part, you know, because you, you you can you can know everything in your own head, but until you can explain it to someone yep. in a manner that they understand, that's a whole different beast. And that's really what I've uh, I've come to enjoy about doing the breakdowns. Yeah. Is showing it to someone, them appreciating it, and understanding what I'm the point I'm trying to make. Main, main, yeah, it's a, it's a good thing to have. Um, speaking about that, you must have been studying your next opponent for for UFC Melbourne. I mean, are you breaking him down? His name's Jason Knight. I, I don't really know much about him. Can you can you tell us about him, his strengths, and how they match up against yourself? Yeah, like uh, I've, I've I've watched his film and and I I see some big holes in his game. Yep. You know, that's I'm not taking anything away from it i'm not t talking about the person you know I'm, I'm i'm talking about the technique and i i see big holes in this technique i see big holes in his in his stand-up and i i see big holes in his game as a whole uh you can you can look at him and he has you know nine of his 12 or 11 wins uh via submission uh on his back oh, and really? now 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 he gets to the ufc and he wants to stand and trade with everyone because he doesn't have the wrestling to implement his ground game. So what's the point of having the best the best submissions and the best uh, triangle, armbar, umaplata, rubber guard in the game if you don't have the ability to put the other fighter on, on the ground? So he's, he's lacking that middle ground where he, he doesn't uh, have the skill set to apply his best weapon, if you understand. Yeah, yeah. And, Getting to the UFC and becoming, getting to the UFC, fighting the best guys in the world, and now deciding that you're somewhat of a striker is really not the best idea in the world. He should have thought about this a long time ago and really rounded out his game, which is something I have done and continue to do. Yep. Is is have not only strengths and weaknesses, but a complete game. So, not only having the striking, but I have, if I do hit the ground, I can submit you. And I can take you out because there's no point. This is this is such. You need all the weapons in the toolbox, man. Yeah. And I've been working on footwork, on takedown defense, and that's something I'm looking to showcase in this fight. Is takedown defense. I'm not giving up one takedown in this fight, 100%. Mean, bro, mean. Well, talking about that, I mean, how is the training going? Uh, uh, where are you training right now? I I know where you are, but let everyone else know. You know, and how's it going? We're only a couple of weeks away from Melbourne, you know. Um, I know you're in Thailand, and so it's the climate. I mean, Melbourne is a bit different to Thailand. How's all that going to work out? When will you move over to Thai, uh, to Melbourne? When will you start going over to there? Yeah, in a couple of days. Uh, I fly out Sunday, so I get to Melbourne Monday morning, and then the fight's not till the following Sunday. So yep. I'm there for six days before. I'm training out in Phuket, Thailand. At Tiger Muay Thai, for yep. everyone that doesn't notice, uh, amazing gym. Look it up online. Uh, we got we got quite quite the Kiwi uh, gang going on here. Uh, Brad Riddell, one of my striking coaches here. We got Kai Kara France it's in the gym, and there's there's just a ridiculous amount of New Zealand and Australian talent training out here at, at Tiger Muay Thai. Um, the the coaches, world class. The training partners uh, are world class. I brought out uh, my my striking coach for this camp, and and my head coach for this camp. His name is Saeed Salem. 
he's a he's a guy from England. I worked with him in Vietnam. He was an assistant coach in Vietnam, and I, I saw the talent in the kid. Man, he's he's young. He's 20, 25, but I, I see the talent in the guy, and I, yep. I I think I have an eye for the game and an, an eye for intelligence. And this guy's right up there, and so he breaks down my fights as well. He watches film, and we kind of go back and forth discussing ideas and tactics, and you know how how we see the fight playing out. And that's the best weapon to my arsenal, man. Is is my secret weapon. And we're going straight to the top. Mean, bro. That's really mean. Um, a lot of a lot of guys I've interviewed, a few local dudes, and they all mention, um, you know, Dan Hooker and the path that you took, the path that you took to the UFC, and they try and replicate that as, as best they can. You know, what advice uh, could you give um, some of the some of the top guys in New Zealand, or maybe some guys looking to to do really well over the next twelve months? I mean. Is it, is it imperative that they go to, to Thailand, you know? Do they have to go, do they have to branch out a bit? I think you have to, I, I personally like being uncomfortable. Yep. I, 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 when, I'm, when I'm comfortable and settled, uh, my performances <coughs> do shit. When, I, when, I'm, when I'm uncomfortable, I perform, man. So that's just for me personally. Uh, but getting out and experiencing the world, seeing different looks, seeing uh, these world, uh, world, world-renowned world fighters makes you appreciate what we have back home. So I think that's the biggest thing. I would travel just for the pure knowledge that what's going on back home in New Zealand with the New Zealand coaches is on a world-class level. It's right up there. Uh, I can't, I honestly can't wait Till I can drag everyone back to New Zealand and get something going there, man. Have, have a gym out there, sponsoring fighters. It's just living expense right now. Yeah. Uh, yep. I, I can train back home, but all my coaches have jobs. Uh, all my training partners have jobs. They have to take half days. They have to they have to go into work late because they're they're coming and helping me in the gym. I have to you know cut across the city in peak hour traffic because my coach finished work now and we can squeeze in a session um whereas globally this is this they are professionals uh they, these guys do this full time yeah you know in thailand we can focus full time no one's no one's got any work to do no one's got any other shit to do we just <laughs> fight we just yeah. we just hang out we just eat it we just breathe it we Mate. just live it here like it's it's all we do we train we teach we fight. It's it's so I can't wait till we can get something going on, drag everyone back to New Zealand and make it one of the meccas, make it one of the powerhouses of global MMA. That would be something special, man. I, I would really look forward to seeing that. Uh, you mentioned sponsors. I know you've got um, a new sponsor, uh, Engage is uh, Engage Fight, where I think uh, is the sponsor, right? Um, yeah. How how do they come to the table, and how how are you trying to get new sponsorship? Like, uh, and how you know how do we get more more uh, sponsors involved with the local scene, and, and then with such as individuals like yourself? Oh, that's the age old question, brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've yeah. seen I've seen so many fighters in the past from New Zealand, especially, just been discouraged. By, by the sponsorship thing it's it's one thing that's never I've never set my mind on too much uh, I set my mind on on having a skill set having the best skill set and then being the best at it and then eventually someone's gonna start paying you to do it yeah so that's that's how I did it with the breakdowns uh, you don't before you start start messaging people oh you know I'm doing these breakdowns uh, someone sponsored I'm not doing it for nothing no, you, you get on it, you start yeah. putting in the yeah. work, you start fighting, and then all that stuff comes. Yeah. Uh, being from New Zealand is not the easiest place in the world to get sponsorships. Engage is hooked me up big time. Like, uh, shout out to Engage, man. They're, they got my back, they got Kai's back, they got all the Kiwi boys back, and there's a, there's a great team of fighters uh, on the Engage fight team. So... I would say focus on the skill, focus on the ability, and then the rest will come. 
don't yeah. let yourself get discouraged by by something stupid um i spent a majority of my pro career working working full-time working part-time and then fighting on top of that it's just something you have to take on the chin until you work your way up there until you can make a living from this game yeah yeah i think uh, your breakdowns um any something like that when once the the reebok deal came in i i saw there was a slow progression into more media so you could do your breakdowns and we're engaged you're not in the cage anymore you don't have to wear reebok anymore so you put out those videos like um a lot of them will put out the uh, like the thug diaries or the or the video blogs of the training, and they get to wear other sponsorship uh, while mm. they're putting that out. And that's a way to to um, showcase their uh, their sponsors in that way. Yeah, well, you you just have to get creative about it. Um, being from New Zealand, I've all, I've always been creative about you know gear and sponsorships and, and going about things. You you have to just get creative man you can't just sit. we're not in one of these big american cities where you can sit back someone's going to give your manager a call and say oh hey i'd like to give dan a bunch of money for wearing these shirts it doesn't work like that here yeah you've got to get a bit more uh ingenuitive with with going about the things one of the i think all new zealand fighters should message f ting and ask him Ting how to deal with sponsors and how to <laughs> how to get sponsors. Because he, he he's ten times the man than I am when it comes to that sort of thing. That dude is a businessman. <laughs> he's a hustler, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully they will. Um, message message Ev Ting. Message Don't turn ask me about sponsorships. <laughs> Um, let's talk fights. Uh, possibly the best and baddest uh, UFC card ever. I went down on the weekend. Um, when you think about that card, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Man, a two-weight world champion is obviously <laughs> ringing, ringing, and on the tip of everyone's tongue, that was a demolition, man. That, that was not a competitive fight at all. I thought it would be, I saw Connor winning, I predicted Connor winning by TKO, but not that easy you know no. he, he made it look like light work bro yeah yeah i re-watched it today um i think it was the first time he actually threw a couple of punches he landed both of them and it was a knockdown um he, he just kept knocking them down after that he stuffed all the takedown attempts and then obviously those huge lefts landed all night um it was just a beautiful thing and i've been back in connor for a long time and i love backing Connor against all the haters and I just love to rub it in their face on a Monday, yeah. you know? Hey, they never run they never run out of they never run out of hate. They just they just move bandwagons, bro. Yeah, yeah, the, Um what was the other one? Uh so the, the in the co main was uh Woodley, yeah, and, Thompson. Woodley and Thompson. That was a, a great fight fight of the night, uh, back and forth and with a a bit of a dodgy decision. Was that the same um, score that Hunt got against Bigfoot Silver? The majority, the majority draw. Yeah. 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 So two two judges two judges scored a draw. It's a draw, man. That's, That's it. But champion champion keeps his. I had it scored a draw. Uh, the champion keeps his belt on a draw, so the result doesn't really change. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm hoping that. They give Wonderboy a rest, and they bring in Damian Meyer for Woodley. Uh, what would you like to see next? Yeah, I don't want to see that fight straight away. Um, yeah, I'd like them to go away, maybe fight some other guys and come back. Uh, I'd like to see guys improving after the thing, because the thing is, if we, we see that fight again, we're kind of just seeing it play out in a little bit different way. Whereas if we give them six months, if we give them eight months, we let them perform against other fighters, then I can get excited about the rematch. Yeah. Then we yeah. can see who has improved, who is approaching this fight in, in a different way and has, has made the adjustments necessary. Uh, I think if they rematch straight away, we just kind of see the same fight play out in a different manner. Yeah, no, that's that's totally true. Yeah, they don't have time to adjust. It's just a, it's just a rerun, really. With you know, and then you with variables, you know, he gets clipped a bit harder next time, or 
or he, he, he does something else. I did I did think Wonder Boy would do a bit better than, than he did. But um mm. scoring yeah, wise, you know I don't I don't uh, agree with the way they scored fights. Personally, if I if you look at who won the fight, Woodley won the fight. Woodley had the choke, Woodley hurt him on the feet. Steven just really pretty much uh, stayed at his distance and, and scored with shots, a lot of scoring shots, but nothing looking for the finish, not really trying to take him out, whereas Woodley was damn near seconds away from finishing that he was, fight. He was. So overall, if I just score it, I score it for Woodley in a heartbeat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and do you have any time uh, t- towards moving towards... UFC Melbourne and your fight, will you be doing any more breakdowns? Will you be breaking down Robert Whitaker's fight, perhaps, or anything like that? Yeah, I hadn't thought about breaking down my... I thought about breaking down my own fight. Yeah, I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do a pre... I'll do a pre-fight breakdown, and yeah. then, then I'll run it back... I'll run it back Monday morning. I'll get a post it up. Sweet. But no, Whitaker's going to be a good one to break down. Yeah. Those are two... two beastly athletic guys uh they got kill shots like crazy man both of those guys possess an insane amount of power i've, I've been watching robert whitaker since he was on the come up man i think he was three and oh when i first saw him fight live in sydney i was over there cornering uh one of my bros uh hot rod mcswain oh uh, yeah i was cornering i was cornering him and he might have been co-main event or, or main event Robert Whitaker was just on the come up. He was fighting on the undercard, I think, for his third or fourth fight. Yep. And I, I seen the guy out back warming up, and he, he's jumping around, running back. And I'd had, I think I'd had, you know, ten fights by then. I was a bit of a, had, uh, you know, I'd, I'd paid my dues by then, and he's, he's jumping around out back, saying, "You're the best fighter in the world. Like this guy can't touch you. This guy can't grapple with you. He can't wrestle with you. He's not as fast as you." He's not as strong as you, and he's jumping around, you know, yelling all this stuff, stuff at himself. And I was just thinking, damn, who is this kid? Uh, he's pretty, he's pretty confident. He's a bit special. Uh, and then I seen him go out there and just wipe the floor with some guy, choke him out in about a minute. So I've been following Robert Whitaker and been impressed with him for a long time. And yep. to see him doing this well on the world stage in a crazy stacked division, man. Yeah, you yeah. Check it, the other name, you check it, the other names in the top 10 yeah. of that division. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculously stacked yeah. with just legends of the game. And to see Robert Whitaker up there amongst them and working his way towards a title shot, I, I was surprised that he wasn't scheduled off the bat as the main event of UFC Melbourne. You know, I thought he could headline and, and draw a crowd regardless uh, I thought it'd be main event. I thought he's definitely earned that spot from the position he's in. He's he's two fights away from a title shot, man. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad he's headlining this event and and getting that exposure, man. Yeah, he's right up there. I think he's either f- ranked number five or six, and I think Brunson is is number nine. Uh, everyone around him was was already booked, which yeah. which sort of hurt him. And I mean, he although he's a superstar here. And we all love him, and an Aussie, he still hasn't broke through, I don't think, into that American market, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I mean, it, it can't it can't be denied for too long. Were you surprised that it took so long for you to get onto the card? Because it, it wasn't straight away at all, you know? There was a bit of, it took a bit of, you know, movement to get there. That's another one, you're getting me going today. <laughs> They took their sweet ass time yeah, trying to get did. me off fight, they man. Did. But that's that's just the way it works, bro. Yeah. They they know what they don't have to give me a visa, they don't have to give me much notice. I don't need much notice personally, a couple of weeks and I'm good to go at hundred percent. But you know, it's it's good to get the fans going, it's good to get the support. Uh I like drumming up the support before a fight. I, I got a bit itchy and I wasn't worried about getting on the cards but I wanted to start making things happen so I got yeah. online started calling every man and his dog out yeah, him and, and, it worked. <laughs> and, it, and it worked yeah where's, where's his message back bro no, no message back <laughs> not not a not a Bo Peep man and I don't think he, I don't think he reads English but I was making it pretty clear that I'll whoop his ass yeah yeah 
No, that was that was great to see. I mean, that the media, the social media, is a big thing, and, and there's nothing wrong, you know. Even even if you didn't get a reply from him, like fucking a hundred thousand people saw that tweet, you know, and, and know your name and see, oh, this guy wants to fight, you know. Oh, bro, honestly, like a lot of people say it, but they're just not about that life. A lot of people sit back and say, oh, I'll fight anybody, I'll fight anybody, but they I'll fight him any day of the week bullshit oh no I want I want three months notice I want 12 weeks I want my camp yeah well I'm, I'm ready to go any day of the week yeah any any time of day man you give me a contract and tell me when to show up and I'll be there uh, but 90% of guys aren't about their life in the UFC still yeah yeah uh, one more thing Barry before I let you go um, you did a uh, what was it a fan blog or something with Maldi TV on at 205 how did that go you, you were mentioning that you that you enjoyed talking to the fans they're quite knowledgeable I'm sure there was a few on there uh, for Sunday nah gutted bro uh, so the servers went down or they had, they had a oh, lot of servers at Maldi TV man I was I was looking forward to it like it's going to be that's something you broke the internet. You know, multi, multi TV is investing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to technology, but it's that's something I think is a, a, a massive step forward for the New Zealand MMA fans to support something like that. We're starting out as more of like a written blog. We are, we are, you know, we had me and Kai on there. We are commenting. We yeah. got Hal Pete's on board, giving giving free stuff away. We're getting more and more sponsors. That, that want to be part of it. Multi TV's jumped on big time, two feet in, they're, they're ready to go. So we'll be getting that done more and more. So it's just like you were saying before, if your mates are idiots and you hate uh, talking with them, you know, you sit down with some people's mates or you go you go to the bar and you're standing next to some dickhead and he's going, oh, is your Chuck Liddell on this card? <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. It's good you can jump on. And you can straight yeah, up just yeah. ask me if you have a question. Ask Kai if you have a question. Get some free pizza. Get some free fight gear. Get some free athletic gear. And we'll we'll move it towards like a video thing where you can you can mute old Joe Rogan. You can mute yeah, whatever yeah, commentator yeah. you don't like, and and you can listen to it with the boys. So it'll be like you're hanging out with us, and you can interact with us. Yeah, that's and, smart. And bro. we'll just be going live, yep. giving stuff away, and it's it's a Kiwi perspective. You know, if if you just want to listen to us and hang out with us, man, it's it's. So the more people support that thing, and the more people that get behind uh, the push for the live blogs, the better. You know, I see it going a real good way, and and the more we can support New Zealand fighters, man, the the more attention you give them online. Social media is everything in the fight game. You, you see Ireland, 4 million people, but how much noise do they make on a global scale? We have, I'm saying it now, we we have better fighters than the Irish team. I said it in a post before, if you square up Team New Zealand versus Team Ireland, we walk right through them at every weight class, 100%. Our fighters beat their fighters in a heartbeat, man. You, you compare the guys, you compare the weights. We clean them up, so the fighters are there. What what's the missing key? We need the we need the backup. We need the push, and we need people to be loud. Yeah, yeah, mean bro. Yeah, um, that's that's exactly what we need, bro. Uh, before I let you go, any last uh, shout outs, uh, sponsor shout out, gym shout outs, uh, any of your bros, anything like that? Yeah, just shout out uh, Tiger Muay Thai out in Thailand, bro, doing big things with the the Kiwi team and, and they got my back and they're looking after us and we're, we're doing big things over here if you ever want to pop by bro you're, you're more than welcome and we'll get you set up uh, shout out my new sponsor Engage Fightwear uh, their, their website launches Friday so man get behind us some cool gear uh, if you haven't checked it out look at it online check out the Facebook the Instagram and get behind that because they're, they're sporting Kiwi fighters big time Massive, bro. Thanks a lot, man. All the best with training and your flights over to Melbourne. Hope everything goes smoothly before the fight. I know that's one of the most important things. And then just take his head off. Cheers, bro. That's what I plan on doing. Lean, bro. Thank you very much, bro. Uh, all the best. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Cheers later. All right.